If you want to help me celebrate one year on YouTube and get ready with me using the Beauty Rust by Color Green, then stick around. Hi there, it's Elen with another video, and as you can see, I am very barefaced. <laughs> it is the morning, late uh, April, and I have been sitting on this video uh, for a number of days now, and for a number of reasons. One of them is it kind of felt like a big deal, and I was trying to figure out how to do a video, well, big deal to me anyway, and I was trying to figure out how to do a video and came up with a bunch of ideas and, and nothing just felt right and and trying to understand what what you would care about in um, in kind of celebrating a milestone, so not my perspective, but, but what would resonate with anybody. And I just thought that the easiest thing was to do a get ready with me, and I, I'm the only thing I have on my face is skincare, so this is real get ready with me. And I thought I could offer some thoughts about having done a year on YouTube and that that might be interesting to you. If there's a part of my get ready with me that is super long or, or whatever, I may just uh, cut or speed it up, but I promise I won't cut or speed up my conversation about this uh, reflections on this last year. So I am going to start putting goop on my face and I have not prepared talking points. I just wanted to share like I would share with a friend over coffee <laughs> what it's like being on YouTube and what I'm grateful for, what I'm looking to improve on for year number two on YouTube. And yeah, that's about it. Let's uh, let's get started with some uh, base products. This is my Joe Fresh uh, Illuminating Primer that I've been working on. You can see the lines there. I'm, I'm a little bit further down. And I usually mix it with um, this mixed with the Sephora Bronze Perfect CC Cream and then the Revlon. Uh, this is my list last time. Not sure. I don't know why I'm showing you. It's a uh, Revlon BB Cream and this is just the list, last little bit that I have left. It's in a project pan. You'll see that I'm almost done. And I depot it because it comes in a tube like this and it's impossible to get at the last 20% of the product. And it's a, if you do it, please don't take offense, but it's a pet peeve of mine when I see somebody with a big tube and they say, well, I can't get anything else out of it. I'm going, if you like it, open it up. <laughs> use the rest. So anyway, I'm going to use a pump of this and a little bit of each one of the other ones. And I got a really good tip about this, and that is to not put the BB cream or foundation so much on the forehead because you don't really need it unless you have discoloration and whatnot on the forehead, unless you're using a color that doesn't really fit. Uh, and so speaking of color, I do uh, warm it up a little bit with the Sephora uh, cream. It's more like a bronzing color, and so you can darken up uh, any face product that you want to use on your face and I just found that the Revlon BB was just a little bit too uh, light so I'm going to start with this and I'm using the viewfinder so my application will be very inaccurate. Uh, I'm going to be careful because um, the BB cream does have SPF in it and I don't want to get it in my eyes and I always have trouble getting too much BB cream around my hairline and um, in my eyebrows. So I'm going to see if I can be more careful. And I said not to put it on the forehead and what did I just do because I'm on automatic pilot right now. Okay. I'm going by feel because I haven't looked up close at what I'm doing. It's it's a lot harder to get ready with me on camera than it is in real life. I, I gotta tell you. Okay, so let's see. I've got a mirror here. Let's see the damage here. Oh, got some pilling. Okay, that's cool. Like I said, it's harder. You know what? I know what it is. I did I didn't put makeup on for three two or three days, except for skincare. And um the Joe Fresh primer, it, it dries up in the tip of the applicator if you don't use it every day. And I think that's that's what these little balls of stuff are. 
And I'm still careful with my eye just because uh, it's still healing. So I don't tend to put a lot of product there. Okay, note to self, if I do another get ready with me with that Joe uh, Fresh Illuminating Primer, I will make sure to get a little bit of that dry stuff out before I apply it. I think that's looking okay. I'm going to wipe my hands. I will go into concealer. I really like mixing those three items together before applying as opposed to trying to layer them because it's just so much faster. Next, I'm going to use my Boeing Industrial Concealer, and you'll see that I have made a modification to it. It was so much on the outer ring that I was getting ticked off because I couldn't get enough product on my finger to apply, and now it's so much easier when the stuff is kind of in the middle. And I'm going to put it right in the mirror and only around my nose. That's, only, that's the only place I'm going to use it, other than, I have to say, I still have a little bit of a bruise here from my eye mishap, and I will be using a little bit there. It is so hard for me to believe that I have been on YouTube for a year. Um, it doesn't feel that long, and it feels longer for a couple of reasons. I, I feel like I'm still a newbie, and I'm just still getting started, which a lot of folks would agree with me. A year is actually not that long on YouTube when you see people perfecting their craft over, you know, five years or something. I mean, some, some folks are measuring in decade now. Um, but I would also say that, that um, it depends on how much you produce. I mean, I, I produced a ton of videos. I, um, I'm in the hundreds. For, I actually just passed the 400 threshold. And so I think that the more videos you put out, the as long as you, you know you you're not putting out crap. I'm hoping you don't feel like I'm putting out crap, um, because the you have uh, you care about production quality or whatnot. Well, the more you do, the more you learn and you adapt and you do things differently. I certainly have a different setup from when I started, and also a different approach. I think you start relaxing a little bit more after having done a number of videos, and that's been really nice. But yeah, I've learned a ton, and I've learned a lot more I know by doing than by just reading about it or taking courses or that kind of thing. You just have to get started and do it. And I know that we hear that from people in all sorts of disciplines, but I really think it's true. Just doing something, you, you learn a lot. I think I have enough of the Boeing Industrial Concealer. I'm going to move over to my NYX. HD photogenic concealer for the under eye and for that one I have learned not to apply too much because I can look like a ghost my under eyes anyway can look ghostly this is it right here um, I did though before starting YouTube I did read up on the editing software I use iMovie and that's been a tremendous help there we go. Just trying. It's a very thin layer. I'm trying to not to use too much. I find I need to wipe the doe foot applicator before putting it on because when I put a blob, it's just I just I always have too much on my finger. All right, let's do that. Yeah, I uh, read a couple of books on iMovie, and that was really really helpful. Um, it went way too in depth for what was really needed to get started, but I appreciated knowing what I could look for later, and I have. I have kind of expanded my abilities, and you'll see it in videos from, if you go back to April of 2018 and compare to, you know, April now, a year later, there's definitely a big change. There's a change in the way I've set up. There's definitely a big change in how I have my makeup um, displayed at the back. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of changes. And I also feel, I feel more like myself too. I don't feel like I need to be overly professional. I think that that's a difference between YouTube and uh, TV instruction or, or paid instruction. The, you're, you're watching, I've got something in my eye. You're watching a person, you're not watching a, a robot. I hate that when you have something in your eye and you can't see, 
what it is. Um, so if I'm blinking and doing funny things, I'm, I apologize. I am going to go into my Hourglass Veil Powder. That was loud. And oh, I put, I got way too much. The sifter, I, I get annoyed with the sifter because it so little comes out. And then I end up tapping too much and then too much comes out from the container. So because I put out too much, I'm going to just use the cap. And what I do is just put it on my under eye. Just to set my concealer. And I was going to get the Becca under eye powder, setting powder, and in the Sephora comments I saw uh, somebody recommending that the Hourglass Finishing Veil was really good for the under eye. And I was using, I finished the CoverGirl Advanced Radiance and that one was horrible under the eye. But I don't mind the Hourglass powder. Now any powder pretty much is going to dry your under eye, but this one is not so bad. But as Kathleen Lights would say, it's expensive. So I do finish the rest of my face with the Fit Me. Uh, this is a loose finishing powder. And yeah, it's a finishing powder and I'm using it as a set setting powder and mm -mm, that's just what I do. Don't come for me about that. It's just, you know, it's we get too stuck on the the, the definition of given products. It's just goop. And makeup companies call it something or, or other, but yeah, I don't, I don't get overly fussed over what things are called. I try them in different ways and and use products the way that suit me the best, and and that's it. And all I'm doing is dumping the container upside down to get the powder, and applying it in broad strokes to begin with and then refining the application. Finally my nose. Okay, I think that looks reasonably good. I have powder everywhere. Oh, and of course I'm wearing a black top. All right, um, we are going to go into the butter bronzer and I don't know why I didn't open it. I just repressed it, um, by the way. If uh, I have readily available pictures of the pressing uh, process, I'll just put them here as I'm talking just because I think it's fun to see. I did also put them on Instagram. If you follow me there, you can see them. And um, using a very fluffy quill brush and the other one the powder brush was also a quill brush these are brushes that i'm testing out I have to be careful because when you repress a powder it is more powdery than it used to be all right let's play with this i'm testing out a bunch of brushes it's going really well so far the only thing that bugs me about the smashbox brushes that you'll start seeing me using uh, momentarily is that there is no crease brush. You can use a flat brush sideways, but it's just not my jam. So if I have a complaint so far about that set, that brush set, it's that there's no crease brush. By the way, for folks who are wondering, I've got a few Battle of the Brands that I haven't updated anybody on. It's not that it's not happening. It, it is definitely happening. Um, I am still working on them. I used um, the volumizing spray uh, today from Way, and um, I'm just I'm finishing all of them. They're only a trial size um, products, and I just decided to finish them all and then talk to you about it. And also as an update, since we're we're talking about the texturizing sprays, I do have a an update on the texturizing sprays and the VIB uh, Rouge Sale as well. Just putting some bronzer on a different brush from Smashbox. This is the contouring brush that comes with the three pan contouring uh, palette. And I just like to use the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer when I'm not doing a serious contour and I just contour my nose with it. It's a neutral enough bronzer color that it doesn't look funny on the nose. So the update is that I said that I would not be doing any just under the lip. 
I would not be making any purchase at Sephora. And it ended up being that I realized that I was running out of texturizing spray and that I was planning on buying the IGK and when, when I decided I was going to buy a texturizing spray because I'm running out and I'm on a no buy but I can replace products that are over and the sale is upon us. I was going to buy the IGK version of texturizing spray and then Lauren May Beauty suggested the Moroccan oil uh, products and I thought well it's a little bit less money she likes the product line let me try the texturizing spray from Mor Moroccan oil and it allows me to give you an extra texturizing spray in that overall battle battle of the brands reviews so I think it's a great decision and it is I would say it's about a week or two early compared to when I really needed to buy it but why wouldn't I take advantage of the sale? It's something I was going to buy anyway. And Moroccan oil is not one that is at Shoppers Drug Mart, so I thought I would I would give it a try. It is definitely pricey for what I like to spend on hair products, but again, doing a battle of the brands, it seemed to make a lot of sense. I think we are ready for some blush and highlighter. And for that purpose, I'm going to use the Elizabeth Arden face palette from the Holiday 2018 kit. I that This is the, the palette out of the three in the kit that I was actually okay with in the review. If you want to see the review, I'll put it right here. And for the purpose of applying the brush, I'm going to use this brush. It is called, it's a Smashbox brush. It is called the Buildable Cheek Brush, which makes sense. And I'm going to use the Sun Blush, which is this blush right here. It's a little bit darker. Um, this is more peachy. That one is more uh, pink. And it's been the one that I've been using um, exclusively since I started using this um, blush set uh, mid of mid April, actually. So a few um, realizations about being on YouTube, this is going to sound really weird, but I have learned how amazing people are, how kind people are, and also everybody says it, but it just seems to be a light bulb moment for everyone at some point. How mean people can be who don't even know you, they've never interacted with you, and they'll say something mean. I don't know why. And, 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 and I do know that it's always about that person more than it is about you. I, I get that part, but it's... <laughs> and I don't... I'm not put off by it as much as you might think. I just find it so strange. And I have no problem deleting comments, blocking people. I mean, I've definitely had some very inappropriate comments, advances, weird stuff over the last year. And I'm tiny. I'm a tiny YouTuber. So I can only imagine the frustration of having a lot of those types of comments for folks who are bigger than me, which is the majority of YouTube. <laughs> but I just think, how, how do you get out of bed one day and decide, I'm going to tarnish someone's day today? Or maybe a handful, or maybe hundreds, I don't know. Uh, some people have issues. I'm done with this brush, I'm going to go into the highlight now. And the middle one is the highlighter I'm going to use, so the same palette. And, I, and I'm not going to say that everybody's day is ruined, but you, you can possibly ruin somebody's day, and... I don't know what on online makes people feel entitled to, to treat others that way in a way that you never ever say in public. I, I would say most of us, because most of us are civil. Um, it is just, it's called a fan brush. Like another fan, um, another fan, another Smashbox brush, but I didn't tell you what I was using. And conversely, I also have a number of folks who are super, super nice to me, who is basically a a stranger, right? I mean, we haven't met in person, um, we don't know each other, but just super, super kind comments, super
super constructive criticism that is helpful and not intended to just be hurtful. Love that. Okay, we're done with this little face palette. I'm going to use my NYX eyeshadow base first and then uh, set it and then do brows. I find that works better. Now, really, really kind uh, comments and I've been delighted by um, the sharing of ideas and information. I've had great uh, recommendations for different products from a number of folks in the comments and I think that is super helpful. Um, as I said, really kind and thoughtful. A lot of folks are it's not just mentioning your, your favorite product, it's just, it's saying, oh, you know, I have this product and I think it would work really well for you because, and I always think that that's so, so, so helpful because um, somebody taking time out of their day to consider what you might like and why and making a recommendation that way, that's so sweet. And I do try to reciprocate uh, with, well, not necessarily to that individual, but in, in general, if somebody is asking a question, I, I do try to consider what they might like the most, either from their profile picture or their explanation, or if they have a channel, their channel. Yeah. And speaking of comments, there's one thing that I'm always so confused about. And that is how somebody with a small channel thinks it's okay to ask sub for sub. If you've seen it in the comments, you may not have because a lot of uh, YouTube creators just delete them. It's a, a request, uh, hey, I'm subscribed to you and so you subscribe to me and then we're both up one, right? That's the idea. I dislike that immensely. It's a waste of my time. If somebody has a channel and they comment below, I will usually go and just check them out to get a sense of who they are and what they do. But to me, it's, it's, it's putting junk mail in my comments section. And I don't think that folks who don't do that appreciate seeing that junk mail. And luckily, YouTube does flag them very often as spam, which that is what it is. I am taking my uh, Pan That Palette Smashbox Matte Exposure. I will not show you the inside because I have an update coming for you, but I will uh, show you the brush. I'm using a very fluffy brush that's actually from the Shape Matters uh, Smashbox Palette. And I'm just going to set my eye primer. Um, so yeah, and if you do that and you think it's a great idea, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you that as a, as a creator myself, I would not, I, I think it's pooping on somebody's video. That's the way I see it. And we're all entitled to our opinion. And I just, I just think it's rude. <laughs> but you know what? We all have a different code of, of conduct, personal code of conduct. And I accept that folks uh, want to behave differently and that's okay. I just don't, I don't have to accept the the comment and, and leave it there I think it's 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 um yeah it's it's just junk um, but yeah do I love I love building community on YouTube and a lot of the folks who have uh, commented on the videos and I found out they have channels I have definitely watched uh, some of their videos I, I think it's great to to support other um, smaller and not so small youtubers and um, I think it's great. I, I really do. And there are so many people who care and produce videos that are smaller YouTubers that, that there's a lot to find on YouTube for sure. And I have, just as a creator as well, I have found a lot of people that I don't think I would have found if I didn't have a channel on YouTube just because of the folks who choose to comment. And that's fantastic. Okay, I think we're good with the base. Another thing that YouTube has done for me is it has caused me to start other social media. Like I'm on Instagram now. I never thought I'd be on Instagram. So that's a big change. <laughs> I'm just going to start off with a little bit of the Annabelle Black is Black on the upper waterline. I like to have that sooner than later. I just think it makes the eyes kind of come through. 
And also, there are a number of brands that I've discovered as well being on YouTube that, and I've been able to talk about. Um, Colored Rain is huge. And that's the uh, palette I'm going to use, one of the palettes. That didn't go well. One of the palettes I'm going to use today. There you go. Doesn't that look better, one eye to the other? I, I love doing the upper waterline. The only thing is the Annabelle Black is Black is very buttery, so it's very easy to get it all over the place. And I smudged up here, just as I said that. Uh-oh. Okay, and there was some transfer to the lower uh, lash line, but it's because I, I blink as I'm applying it and it um, causes me some, some grief. Just going to powder right where I went a little bit over the line. I'm going to do my brows next, but they take me so long. <laughs> I think that I'm going to just cut that footage and come back uh, to you with my eyebrows done. All right, I am back. Eyebrows are done, and I also applied some more of the NARS Velvet Glide in Bound, and I think it's beautiful. For my eyebrow products, I used um, Joe Fresh products, uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills, and essence and so you can take a look at all of that stuff in my description box below if you want to see what it was. I think we're ready for eyeshadow. My favorite part and I'm sure it is for a lot of people. So I have the Beauty Rust palette. This is the third of four palettes that I am using from Colored Rain because I'm doing a brand new focus on Colored Rain. Uh, brand new focus is a series where I try everything from a brand and then do my final thoughts afterwards. And so I am trying every single shadow of those four palettes. So far I've done Cheers to the Beauty. I'll just show you. So far I have done Cheers to the Beauty and this one is being discontinued by Colored Rain. So if you're interested in a palette like this, I'll show you what it looks like. Then you may want to get your hands on it. It is 50% off right now. This is what it looks like on the inside. Try not to blind you. 12 shadows plus a highlighter very very pretty i i really like it if you like color i like it uh the iconic queen of hearts i also just finished using that one i mean now i'm now using the beauty rust which you'll see today and then the last one that i'll use is the coloring vivids which is also an infamous palette they used to be singles and now they're in a 16 pan palette form and I love the fact that a lot of the palettes come in a sleeve like this because it just keeps your palette super nice. I have to say though that this palette is very bulky, this one, and although I, I do love that it does come still with the protector, I don't see why I would keep something that big for six shadows. So I'm probably going to depot this one. And this is what it looks like. And I don't have a plan at all for what I'm going to do. I feel like doing Dusk in the crease and Dream as the duochrome on the lid and probably, yeah, probably Dream and Nighty Night but with this one in the crease. I think that is the right one but I'm going to start with um, Natural to add a little bit of color all over the lid before I get into um, the other colors. So I'm going to use a lot of this brush which is the brush I use to set my eye primer and we'll go right into natural to start off the crease. So far I've really enjoyed the mattes in the Color Drain palettes. I've, I've enjoyed everything but um, since I'm applying a matte I thought I would let you know that I like the mattes. Um, they're very powdery. I don't like mattes that are too hard to apply. I find powdery mattes really blend really nicely. And um, so that those are my thoughts. Seems deeper on this side. Maybe I had more on the brush. Side note, I have birds singing outside my window right now. 
and it's so lovely to be in the springtime. Another topic that um, I would love feedback on if you can offer some, and I'm going to just deepen this side because they don't match, is so I'm not, like I said, I'm not, I'm not very big and I'm not really trying to, um, I don't like the, the fake way of growing a channel. So I've already talked about the sub for sub nonsense that I think doesn't make anybody look good, certainly doesn't make the, uh, the person asking look good, that I really don't like. And another thing I really don't like is, um, Contests or giveaways that just all you're looking for is volume of subscribers, but it anybody can can win and it's not it just feels a little weird. And I have accumulated some things to do giveaways on this channel, but I've really been struggling on how to go about it. And if anybody wants to give me some feedback in the comments below on the type of giveaways that you think are done really, really well and giveaways that you think stink. <laughs> I would appreciate the, the feedback. What I'm struggling with is I would much rather, I would much rather reward somebody who's been supportive of the channel for a while than somebody who goes, oh, giveaway and just subscribes. I, to me, that's not that different from sub uh, for sub because what it is is you are subscribing to that person's channel, not giving a hoot about who they are, what they do, or what their content is, because you really haven't watched any. You just want to win free stuff. And I'm I'm kind of cold to that, but I would like to do giveaways. And yeah, it would be fun. And I just don't know how to go about it. And I have stuff already. Like I said, I just don't know how to go about doing it in a way that's fun, in the way that's rewarding for everyone, and that is an overall positive experience, not a negative one. And I've also seen situations of people feeling that giveaways are negative, and I don't, I don't want to play that. I just, I want to steer clear. I'm going to go in, now that I've got natural, I'm going to go in with Dusk, that nice red shade. And I am a big fan of red crease uh, looks right now and this is more of a burgundy but fire starter from the urban decay elements and then um ladyship from the queen of hearts and then there's another red one from cheers to the beauty as well wow those look good in the crease if you have a warm skin tone yeah beautiful and if you don't have warm skin tone you can try to use red in the inner lid uh, crease with a different color on the outer lid because the inner lid lets you wear any color regardless of whether it fits with your skin tone. That said, you wear whatever you want. There are no rules. It's just some people care more about something being super flattering than other people, so I thought I'd mention. I, I Something I find really interesting because I wear my YouTube looks out in public I have people can judge I don't care and it's so funny to hear because I have I, I deal with clients uh, quite a bit during the day and I'll hear <laughs> I'll hear somebody say oh you did a good job today it really looks good and the translation is what your objective is is to look your best self every day and this looks this makes you look better than what you've worn before and I find it interesting that the only objective in people's mind of makeup is to make yourself look better. No, not always. You sometimes want to make a statement, you want to do something editorial, and it has nothing to do with making you look your best. If I did that, I would be wearing nothing but neutrals and maybe a colorful liner. Um, that is just not me, and this is not working. I have some skipping here and I'm just going to take care of it with a concealer brush. Don't ask. <laughs> or sure, do ask. It just, I find it super um, dense but fluffy at the same time. And it works great. It just, it, it took care of my issue there. So I'm happy, yeah. Okay, 
I'm going to do the same on the other side. Stop talking so I can speed it up. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now I said that I was going to use Nighty Night on the outer lid and then go into uh, Dream. And I'm going to change powder brushes, or I should say eyeshadow powder brushes, to make sure that I have a denser brush for the inner, um, the outer lid. And this is going to be it right here. And it is not the contour, what is it called? The full coverage. So I'm looking for full coverage and that brush will do it for me. So Nighty Night is what I'm going into. So going back to the giveaways, I am really hoping to have that figured out sooner than later because makeup expires and I have some stuff that is absolutely fabulous that I would love someone to be able to use sooner than later. I also have decided that um, a contest needs to be international because I find it disheartening for um, YouTubers to have an international audience, but then refuse to send anything out of their country, outside their country. And so I don't feel like keeping it to Canada or to North America is enough. I, I really want to make sure that it's open to everybody. And you know what, I'll just do fewer giveaways if I find that the postage is too much, but I still want to make sure that, that I give everybody who supports the channel a chance to to win. I mean, and it's so nice. I have, let me say the folks I, I know I have already. I have some folks from España. I have some folks from Portugal, um, France, US, Canada, of course. Um, who am I forgetting? Australia. It's really nice to see folks from all over. It's so exciting and just shows that we're a community no matter where we live in the world. And it's so exciting. If I have missed your country, please let me know down below where you're from. If I don't know that you're an international subscriber, that's awesome to know, love it. I'm going to go a little bit deeper on both sides. I think I've gone deeper on this eye compared to this eye, so I'll just go one last little bit. It's hard for me to tell because behind you, right there, there is a window and there's no window on that side. So sometimes I think that it's messing with me even though I have a ring light. We're going to call it even, how's that? Let's go in now to the inner lid and use Dream. That's the dual chrome, and I'm only going to use my ring ring my pinky to apply it um, the one thing in this um, six pan is there's really no brow bone depending on your skin tone um, but I do have vanilla on already from that Smashbox matte exposure I think I'm okay but just a just a comment so going into this uh, dream which is the shimmery duochrome and oh and if you want to see the swatches for all of the color drain palettes I'll have them all in the description box Well, that's pretty. That's really pretty. One word of caution, I probably should have used a glitter glue. Um, sometimes some of the Colored Rain sparkly duochromes like this do have some fallout. I have a tiny bit, but usually that happens in application. But I have noticed that uh, wearing one set for Easter that I had some fallout throughout the event. So I, I really like that. All right, other side. Okay, I just went in with a little bit more on each side. I'm going to wipe my fingers and also take care of the fallout. I think I'm going to reapply the Annabelle Blackest Black and I'm also going to go and take a 
an Urban Decay pencil called Demolition, and I'm going to put that on my upper lash line and my lower waterline and lash line, and finish up with the Mr. Big mascara. That, that's my plan. The last thing that I wouldn't mind talking about is, okay, well, I've been on YouTube for a year, and what is my goal for uh, next year? Well, my goal uh, overall is to reach a thousand subscribers because for me, it is the milestone, the real first step of saying, okay, you are really a YouTuber. You have the kind of traction that uh, gets you noticed. And of course, uh, a thousand is a bit of an arbitrary number that YouTube has set for something called monetization. And to me, it's like, okay, well, they set that number and they could have picked any number, but for me, it's like, okay, well, YouTube starts thinking that you're relevant and there must be a reason why they settled on a thousand. Of course, it's a nice round number. They wouldn't have settled on 1127, right? I picked that right out of my, you know what? I just see it as, it's almost like a rite of passage. You need to get to there to get to all sorts of exciting things. And it's not just the monetization. Once you hit a thousand, there are a number of things that are available to you. And different thresholds, if you're not a YouTuber, you may not know this, different thresholds of subscribers allow you to do different things. And so, for example, once I hit 100 subscribers, I was able to to select a permanent channel name that's just a, not a bunch of gibberish after a, a forward slash. And that's that was really exciting to me. And so I was thankful to be able to make that change. And I made that change just a few weeks ago, even though I've been over 100 subs for a while now. But um, I don't know, it just, it gives you incentive, I think, to to keep forging ahead because you get to do new and different things with your channel that at lower levels you can't. And so to be able to do things like live chats would be super, that would be awesome. Interacting with folks with in, in real time, that would be a lot of fun, don't you think? And I would definitely agree with anybody who says, well, you know, this is just a passion project. Uh, what do you care about the, the the number of folks you have? And to me, increasing my subscriber count is important because it's a message that I'm doing some things right and that, that I'm doing something of value, producing something of value, and that that is my reward, is that people are saying, hey, you know what, I think this is kind of cool. I want to support it. And that's a lot of... It's like getting a thank you card. Getting somebody subscribing because they like your stuff, not, not for any other reason, is it is like getting a thank you card. Along with every single one of your comments. Every time I get a comment, to me it's a thank you card. And I really, really appreciate it. I'm gonna gush. <laughs> I am excited. I'm excited to hear what you guys... I hate saying you guys. I am always super excited to hear what you think. You. You, the person watching. And to be able to respond. Um, I especially think that a request of yours, a request for a cer certain video or a question that you may have that you think I might be able to answer, I, I love that. It's it's so sweet and and I always hope that I am offering a good response and I try to respond how, well, in the way that I would hope a YouTuber would respond to me as well. So it's, yeah. And I also try to be a good subscriber and leave comments in a way that I think the other YouTuber would, would appreciate too. That whole thing about not pooping in somebody's backyard. I have a speck of dirt on the mirror and I keep thinking I have something on my chin. <laughs> Yes, I know I have mascara on my face, but if you don't know the rule, let me explain the rule. 
If you have mascara smudges somewhere, leave them on your face, even though if it, it drives you crazy, because it drives me crazy. Let it dry completely, and then you can flake it off without smearing your makeup. I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy. Monsieur Big is, I, I, it was in a fight, neck and neck, not fight, but it was in a race, neck and neck with Steela Huge. Spoiler alert for my next Mascara Madness, this one's winning, and I will give you more information when I do my mascara update. Okay, clearly this lipstick does not go with this eye look, even though I love that NARS Bound. I don't like NARS so much as a company, but they, there are certain products that I really like of theirs. So I'm going to change, well, I'm going to select a lipstick and be right back. I am going to apply one of my two favorite lips, oh, gosh, I have more than two. Three. <laughs> three lipstick, three favorite lipstick brands. So first brand would be Buxom. Second brand would be Urban Decay, pretty much anything in their Vice lipstick line. And third will be Smashbox. And I have a couple here. And this is the Smashbox Metallics line. And they look like this. Let me just... Now the labeling on makeup is always made for right-handed people to, to um, hold up. Because if you do it uh, with as a left-handed person, it's always upside down. Just thought I'd mention that for us little lefties. And for to just be thankful if you're right-handed that the world is made for you. All right, so I have a couple. One of them is Rust Fund, and the other one is Bold Digger. And I'll hold it upside down just so you can see. <laughs> this is uh, Rust Fund, and this is Gold uh, bold Digger, and this is the one initially I thought I was going to use, but I think that Bold Digger looks better. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to put this one right back. Anything I have right up front back here is usually stuff I really like. So you can see that my always on lipsticks are there from Smashbox, and on that side you'll see my Vice lipsticks as well. Good indication of what I like. All right, so I'm going to put this on. Funny thing is, I'm not big on the Urban Spectrum palette, but it is, it sits right here on my shelf and it has a big mirror. And I use it a lot to get ready because you can put a quad right into this tray and then use the rest of the tray as your mirror. So it works, it works quite nicely. If you wanted to know more the, of the behind the scenes, what you need to know as a YouTuber, let me know. I think there's even a tag for that. Let me know if that would be something that you would want me to film because I'll show you how my setup works and everything. I think it's helpful to see a bunch of people do that so that you can get a sense if you want to do a, if you want to try your hand at YouTube or if you're just, just starting and you want to kind of see more of how people do it. And of course, just if you're a, you, a YouTube watcher and you just want to know how things work. Okay, so let's get into this. And I do love the applicator on these. They work really well. Just, <laughs> now that I've said that, watch me botch my makeup, right? Botch my, my lipstick. Good color match, right? I think so. I wiped my previous lipstick off and I wiped some of my makeup off. Whoops. The struggle is real. It's life. I think sometimes we edit too much stuff out that just makes us human. <laughs> and I think the fact that we are just like everybody else is what makes YouTube so interesting. So we should show it more often. And I am not the best at applying lipstick. But this applicator really helps. I 
I think this is turning out to be quite a nice look. <laughs> Speaking of nasty comments, earlier and there was one that was so mean and just said, oh, way too orange, horrible, like as in, you don't know what the hell you're doing. And I thought, well, if you don't like orange, don't like orange, but some people do, and this is very orange, but I don't think it looks that bad. Anyway, <laughs> I will leave it at that. Thank you so much for hearing my ramblings and helping me celebrate a year on YouTube. I didn't talk that much about it, but a little bit, and I just, it feels like you were right there with me, next to me, everybody looking in the same mirror and putting their makeup on, kind of like a makeup application party. And at least that's how it felt. And I thank you so much for joining me. It was a real treat to film this video and it's going to be hell to edit it, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you in the next video just as much as I'm looking forward to another year on YouTube. Thank you so much, take care, and see you soon.